The Ducati Scrambler icon came into India in 2015 and was the most affordable Ducati on sale. Keeping things simple, this Scrambler is a mix of history and the present day. Atit joins us today having picked up the Scrambler almost immediately and has been riding out every chance he can. Hi Ajit, it's nice to have you on the show. Well, the name Scrambler is iconic across brands and Ducati have probably the most history associated with the name. So, when the new Scrambler was released, was it love at first sight? What made you choose this bike? Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, yeah, you can say love at first sight. Uh, because the first time I saw this bike, it was in a magazine and that magazine really screamed at me. Uh, so the headline read, Ducati wants your soul and the scrambler is reason for you to give it to them. Yeah. And that got my curiosity and I started flipping the pages, looking at the bike. It was really pretty. I really liked the way it looked and the simple design and the way it just popped up there. I said, if it comes to India, I must own this bike. <laughs> True love at first sight, you could say that. Well, the Scrambler is a take it anywhere kind of motorcycle. So, how has your experience been with it in real life conditions? Yeah, it is a take, I mean, you can really ride the bike anywhere, and I have done it, I have done it all over the place. And uh, it's a no fuss bike. You don't think twice wherever you go. I've been off road, I've been highways, of course, mm -hmm. and a bit of city uh, city riding. For the city, it's it's extremely comfortable. It's a it's a big, it's a, what I would call a typical old school Indian bike on oh. steroids. Which is <laughs> it's just massive, but then you can move it around. Very nimble, very flickable in the city, so you can do your thing between traffic and things like that. On the highway, uh, extremely stable. Of course, there's a lot of wind blast. It's expected. It's a naked bike. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no protection from anything. Um, off-road. While they do call it an off-road bike, it's not. It's, it's a soft off-roader. It's not. It's not. It's not really meant for proper rocks and rocky terrain and things. But mud, slush, grass, grassy, grassy hills. And estate roads, I would say coffee estates and tea estate mm -hmm. roads is the perfect place for it. Oh. And uh, this bike keeps you happy, keeps you going there with, with no trouble at all. It's got nothing going against it in that kind of terrain. Okay. Absolutely good bike. So on highways, on a cruise speed of about 120, the bike is very comfortable, very comfortable mm -hmm. to ride. Like I said before, the, the wind blast is given because it's a naked bike. Mm -hmm. But if, you're, if you have proper helmets and aero, the aero helps if you have a good helmet. The bike handles beautifully on long sweeping bends. Bangalore to Goa, Bangalore to Kolhapur. These are the rides I've done. Bangalore to Valpare, NH44. Smooth highways, the bike is really nice. It keeps up with some good touring bikes as well. Absolutely no issues. The braking is excellent. The braking is excellent. There's a huge front uh, disc which helps in the braking. Um, in estate roads and when you go slightly off-road, it's best to switch off ABS mm -hmm. and enjoy the bike a lot. The throttle response is a little, it takes time to get used to it because it's really snatchy. I mean, it really leaves you and this bike is renowned for <laughs> shocking people <laughs> when, you, when you initially buy it and you start riding <laughs> and you can't believe the Ducati power that actually comes with the bike. Absolutely. You thought it was a tame scrambler but yeah. You need to be a bit careful. It allows for standing up and riding in mud and slush and a bit of off-road. But not the suspension is not really meant for hardcore off-road. In the city, it's a very comfortable bike to ride. Like I said, very flickable. Um, it does have engine heating when you are paused behind traffic, the traffic jams and yeah. Bangalore's traffic. Uh, yeah, that happens all the time. And this bike, since it's air-cooled, it prefers big. Big, big, this temperature is right. It prefers big gaps in uh, highways where the air is cooling the engine and uh, the bike is on song when you're between 22 to 26 degrees after that. More than that on the highway, it's fine. In the city and where you're, there's slow traffic through villages when you're traveling, it does heat up a little near your legs. Uh, I've done about 15,000 kilometers now. Absolutely no problem. It's comfortable for up to 600 kilometers a day. You can do it. The posture, riding posture is really nice. Uh, the mileage, the mileage 
surprisingly has always been between 20 and 23 which is very good for this bike at uh, even at a steady speed above uh, 120 120 130 it gives you that and it's fuel reserve light comes on only at around 220 kilometers okay. and therefore the range of the bike on a full tank you can probably do up to 260 which oh, is really nice yeah. for this kind of a bike it's a really powerful bike yeah Right now, how has your experience been in terms of handling and braking in all these varied conditions? In terms of handling uh, in the highway, because this bike is shot with dual sport tyres, which are knobby tyres, it I wouldn't say it's as good as a sport bike, but it's very much there. Uh, most of the times I ride with the Ducati Club and there are the whole all the variants of Ducati motorcycles are with us and I'm able to corner as good as most of the bikes. Mm -hmm. Uh, on highways. Uh, where this bike really shows its prowess is the twisties on a hill climb. Okay. And that's where the joy of riding or the land of joy for scrambler <laughs> really comes to both. I mean, we can make up places, catch up with the big bikes because right. this bike is so nimble and she really likes to be leaned over. Uh, we are sliding our toes and toe scrapers all through. <laughs> all through. It's, it's very exciting to ride through uh, hilly terrain with a lot of hairpin bends and twists. Um, handling in mud and and uh, probably rough terrain of a slight off-road. Again, the knobby tyres help a lot. It can be better. There's uh, the latest variant of the Scrambler which has made sure that all of those th points are addressed. Okay. I wouldn't say it's the greatest off-road handler, but it's perfect. The thing with off-roading itself on a motorcycle like this, uh, ideally a guy, uh, a seasoned rider, somebody who's a very good rider, uh, makes this bike look like, uh, you know, child's play in an off-road territory. But for you and I, for a normal consumer, or a normal biker who buys it, who doesn't really off-road too much, it's not easy. It's not, it's not, it's not the easiest of off-road bikes. But on the highway and in the city, of course, it's uh, fabulous. The braking, the braking is, is so good, it's so good. It's, it's, uh, it, it's got Brembo brakes, it's got a Brembo big disc in the front. Uh, 330 mm disc. I think it's the largest in the entire Ducati lineup. Uh, though it's a single uh, single disc, uh, braking gives you a lot of confidence. A lot of confidence. The brakes are very very good, and the engine braking. It allows for a lot of engine braking. It has a bit. Uh, I wouldn't say a slipper clutch, but a kind of a variant of a slipper clutch mm -hmm. in it. So it allows for a lot of engine braking at good speeds, especially when you are reaching the toll booths on the highway. Um, Cornering again, like I've said, yeah, cornering is good. It's very good, very good. Well, now the Scrambler being one of the most affordable Ducatis out there, is it expensive to maintain? What are the running and service costs of the Scrambler and are you happy with the service provided by the company? Yeah, the uh, it is the most affordable Ducati out there. I think the red variant on the same bike is, is about 15,000 cheaper. I don't know why, but it is. Okay. The Ducati red is the cheaper color, right. and the 62 yellow is the, is the hero color, more expensive. Um, maintenance is easy. This bike has very minimal technology. There's, there's hard, ABS is the biggest thing it has. Um, ABS, and yeah, that, that, that's it. So the maintenance is. Uh, it does, therefore doesn't have any other expenditures because less things break down, less things to worry about. Um, your initial, your first service is about uh, eight and a half thousand rupees, eight and a half thousand rupees for the first thousand kilometers, and then at twelve thousand again, it's that same uh, between eight to nine thousand rupees, mm -hmm. which is which is decent, which is decent for a super bike. If you see what this bike is capable of, and after you've owned it. By the time you reach 12,000 kilometers, I think you forget the fact that it's going to cost you another 9,000 rupees. What's uh, expensive in the Scrambler is the little accessories that you want to add on. Yeah. The belly pan. The belly pan is so crucial to this bike because you, because it, it's a go anywhere bike and you ultimately go anywhere and then you <laughs> you will hit something. The belly pan, the crash guards, and little bits and bobs which are part of the Scrambler catalog. They, those are expensive. 
I think unnecessarily expensive. They're really expensive, and uh, there is a waiting period. You order these things, and they come down from Italy, so everything takes about 30, 45 days to get the smallest of parts. Okay. But these are again accessories, not the crucial, not the mm-hmm. crucial parts. Maintenance is good. Bangalore service center is very good. Uh, without a problem. Again, I said this bike, the maintenance, uh, the the servicing, but it's it's so basic that uh, the turnaround time, and I think the scramblers come out of the garage the fastest, <laughs> which is good. This is a good thing to know. Um, All right so finally do you suggest any changes or modifications to make the bike and the ownership experience any better Yeah the first modification for rev heads super bike lovers and things like that would be the exhaust mm-hmm. there is an uh, there are many aftermarket uh, versions but there is a there is a scrambler turbing nani exhaust as well and that's going to set you back by about a lakh which is expensive Whoa. and then Now you know you are talking super bikes because <laughs> everything is getting a little costlier. Uh, the sound of this bike, though, I'm personally happy with it. But uh, recently, when I did a ride with another Scrambler and I heard an Acura on that, an Acura Pervic exhaust on that, I realized what I'm missing from my engine. This bike is capable of a fantastic note, a fantastic engine note, which you don't hear in the stock exhaust. Stock exhaust actually sounds like uh, a mixie. <laughs> so, so that's. Um, It's okay for some people when you don't wake up the neighbors in your apartment block. It's fine, <laughs> but uh, yeah, now and then you do want a, a, a better sounding exhaust. Modifications, I would say, that's nice to have. A crash bar is essential. I don't know why it doesn't come with the bike as standard in, the, in this kind of design, which is just a simple uh, bar. Belly pan, like I said, is very crucial. Absolutely very crucial. Another thing is the tire life of of this bike. because the torque is so good the torque is 68 newton uh, meters it's it it really eats up tires oh, and okay. even sedate riding your uh, super bike tires like these dual sport pirellis uh the rear tire mine lasted for 10000 km about 10500 which oh. is very good in the ducati stables <laughs> it's very it's very good most ducatis eat up their tires at 6000 7000 8000 km so mine lasted 10500 and the front tire lasted for about 14400 km mm. which is very good tires are expensive that's one of the most expensive consumable on this bike the rear tire when it's in stock which is a rare thing uh with the dealer when it's in stock with the dealer it ranges but anywhere between 17 to 19000 for the rear tire and the front tire is about 14000 when they're not in stock and you have to use your own I mean, whatever you contact other dealers and things you end up paying 20 plus 20000 plus for the rear tires that's expensive that's really expensive but then compared to the other super bikes like i said the life of the tire is about 10 and a half thousand kilometers which is good it's advisable to change them at 10000 when you notice the center becoming a little soft mm-hmm. because they can really punk- get punctured very fast without you even noticing that yeah the another big uh, maintain its cost is the desmo service which comes at 24000 km oh. um the desmo service is ducati's big service for all their models but for the scrambler it's at 24000 km and that's when they reset the timing valves and yeah. your bike you get a you get a bike that feels brand new mm-hmm. but uh, your wallet is is, <laughs> is poorer by about 25000 bucks okay. that's expensive that's really expensive One suggestion I have for long distance rides and anybody who likes to be in the saddle for more than 300 km a day is to upgrade the seat to upgrade the seat to a comfort seat mm-hmm. from Ducati. It is pricey it's about 20000 plus mm-hmm. like all things Ducati <laughs> but uh, it 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 adds value because it's almost an inch or more of good riding form. Okay. The cheaper option is to do what most uh, scrambler riders do buy a pair of gel cycling shorts <laughs> and wear them when you're riding as a well. bonus. Yeah. All right Ajit thank you so much for being on the show it was great to know your experience of the scrambler Ah thanks for having me here uh, I hope my experience and feedback on the bike and my ownership experience influences a lot of young Ducati to join hope to see them on the rides and I hope 
everybody knows what it takes now to, to own a Ducati. It's not much. So the Scrambler carries on where its predecessors left off. A do-it-all motorcycle which still is a purebred Ducati. Thank you for watching this video. Please share your comments and questions below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for all the latest reviews. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.